In this video, we are going to learn HTML for new developers. Now, if you missed my last video, which is how to set up Visual Studio Code um, in a professional coding environment and workspace, you definitely want to watch that. That link is in the description. Go ahead, watch that and come back to here. In this video, we're going to learn HTML, which is the content for the web. I'm going to go ahead and close this real quick. I can click on this folder thing and get rid of all those files. So I have a little more screen to work with. Um, but if you think about a website, it's got content and it's got look and feel to it. So the content would be the words on the page, any images on the page, any buttons on the page. Um, and that those words, images, and buttons could look a thousand different ways with a thousand different colors. So HTML is what puts the content on the page. Um, and it's ugly. You can tell that this is ugly. I don't even have a font that's being chosen for me, uh, let alone a font size and a font color or a background color. That's because I'm just using HTML right now. I'm just adding content to my page. After that, we'll get into CSS, which is cascading style sheets. CSS would say, give me a gray background with blue text and a button with rounded rectangle corners on it. And let's make this image small. And I don't know, let's make it shake when you hover over it. Things like that, that's CSS. And so when people learn HTML and CSS together, they can build a full website. Uh, and then JavaScript is what a developer will learn to add functionality to that website, where you can maybe post a tweet to Twitter and things like that. That's all functionality, that's JavaScript. So those three technologies make a web developer's toolkit. Now, what we're gonna do in this video is we're gonna learn HTML. Um, and HTML is the easiest piece of all three. You can really learn it in a day or even an hour because all you have to do is memorize a few words. Let me show you what I mean here. I'm gonna take away all this code um, and I'm gonna leave that top one there uh, because that's the one that says, hey, it's an HTML web page. Um, everything in HTML is considered a tag. A tag looks like this, a greater than symbol, the tag name, we'll call this HTML, um, and then any attributes, I'll get to attributes in a second, and then the less than symbol. You can see when I type that less than symbol, VS Code, Visual Studio Code, automatically added what's called a closing tag for me, which is the same thing, but it has a slash. Anything between the opening tag and the closing tag is considered inside of a tag. So if I type, 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 this is now inside of my HTML tag. And that's how that works. You can have tags inside of tags. I could have a body inside of the, the HTML tag. Um, and then I could have other tags inside of that. You can have as many tags inside of as many tags as you want. It's all just tags. Tags can be two things. They can have an opening closing, or if there's nothing inside of them, they can be what's called self-closing, which you add a slash to the end of it. Um, and a good example of this would be an image. An image is the IMG tag. Um, an image doesn't have text inside of it or any of that. It loads an image from a web server and spits it out on the page. So we don't have to have an opening and closing tag. It can be self-closing. Um, and then we define things. How does that image know which image we're pulling from the internet? We're gonna use what's called attributes for that. So a tag can have one or more attributes. To do an attribute, you do a space after the tag name and you give it an attribute. Let's say it has a width. Width equals 300. And so you do equals and then an opening closing of quotes. And then whatever's inside of that is considered the attribute. So think of it as a person, right? The tag name is image. Let's say this was called Frank and Frank has a height. Well, he could have a width too. The, there's attributes about Frank, right? As a person, he's got a certain height and he's got a certain intelligence. These are things that are qualities about Frank, intelligence high. <laughs> and so that's kind of how tags and attributes work. The tag is what the thing is. The attributes describe things about that tag. So in this case, we have, in the case of image, we have an image and you might have a height, a width and a source, which is where that image comes from. That is all of HTML. We just covered all of HTML right here. Tags with tag names and attributes. That's it. From here on out, you just have to memorize a few tag names and a few attributes, and you have all of HTML done. So let's get into some of these common tag names. There's really three categories that give you everything you need to start off. To build an HTML web page, you have to have three tags to start off. You have to have an HTML tag. Again, I'm just typing HTML and hitting tab here, and Visual Studio Code is doing the rest. So really, all you do have to do is memorize some words. So I'm doing an HTML tag. 
Inside of that, I'm going to do a head tag. And then I'm also going to do a body tag. Those are the three tags that it takes to build a web page. You notice that head and body are both inside of HTML. That's extremely important. Um, now, HTML doesn't care about white space at all. So these could be like this. These could be like that. It doesn't really matter. None of that matters. It only matters to you, the developer. We like to keep them indented in such a way where it's easy to see what's inside of what. So that's what the indentions are all about. And I indent using tab. So you can go tab and then you can also select one or more things and do shift tab or tab and things will move around indention wise. So that's what those indentions are all about. Um, in our head tag, we'll add one title tag here and let's say my page. And let's add an exclamation mark because we're feeling chirpy today. So there we go. You can see up here at the top, if you can see it because it's really little, it says my page exclamation mark. In the body, let's add our hello world back. And then that is our web page. So we've got our body. Our body is everything that the user sees in this main body of the web page. So all of the rest of our tags are going to go in here. And so that is your basic three tags for a web page HTML, head, body and a title tag, which you don't have to do, but pretty much everybody wants to do it because you want a, your tab to have a title. So now let's look into how you style text. Text comes with uh, H1 tag being your biggest piece of text, which is a header. There you go, wow, that's really big. I'm kind of zoomed in here to make it easier, but wow, that H1 is big. And you can go all the way down to H6, uh, my subtitle. So you notice that H2 is by default a little smaller. The default CSS for H1 is gonna make it huge and H2 is gonna be smaller and smaller still. All the way down to H6, I'll do an H6 here, which is even smaller. So the H6 is even smaller then. And what these are used for is these are used for telling Google um, if you want it to rank your page to rank on Google and all of the web browsers and everything, what the most important pieces of your page are. So Google's gonna look at your page and it's gonna say, oh, the H1, that's the title for the whole page. H2, these are section subtitles. So any content blocks within your page will be H2s. And farther down, if, if an H2 has multiple content blocks in that, those will all be H3s. That's what we use those tags for. CSS could make this one huge and make this one tiny. So it doesn't necessarily relate to size, it more relates to importance. So those are our H1, H2, those are our header tags. Uh, and then there's a P tag, which is for a paragraph. Hi, I'm a paragraph of text. So there's my paragraph of text. And if I do multiple ones of these, then you'll notice that each one kind of has a space in between it, just like you would expect a paragraph to do. Default CSS is gonna add a space below each paragraph. Um, and so that's how paragraphs work. Now, you'll remember I mentioned that HTML does not care about white space. So if I do a ton of spaces here, it doesn't change. When I save it, nothing is different. What if I add a million returns here? Whoop, I accidentally got a slash, so we'll get rid of that slash. If I had a million returns, nothing changes. HTML does not care about spaces past one. The first space works because you know you really couldn't type anything without a space, um, but that's kind of how HTML works. It doesn't care about white space. White space is what you use as the developer to make it easy to read all the content. Well, what if I wanted to add a line break like that? Well, there's an actual tag for a line break called BR, and it's a self-closing tag because it doesn't have any content in it. And you can see, there we go, we have an actual line break, a return, an enter key got added into that. So that's a tag you wanna know as well, BR for line break. Um, and then what if you wanna change some of the ways these work? Uh, you can add strong to make it bold. Let's make it a strong paragraph. Added a space there, probably don't need a space there. Strong is basically what you use for bold. If you're looking at really old web pages, you may see a B tag floating around, which does the same thing, but that's that shouldn't be used anymore. Strong is what you should use for bold now. Um, and then EM is what you use for emphasis, which is italics. You can see, there we go, italics. So those are the tags that we use for bold and italics, strong and EM. And we're actually getting a lot of the way through this list. So if you feel overwhelmed, just remember, we only have about 12 words we have to memorize. HTML, head, title, body, P, strong EM, and then we also covered our header tags. And you're almost through basic HTML with just those words. Uh, here's a fun one. There's buttons, I'm a button. 
There we go. We have a button. Looks like I got a typo in there somewhere. Yep. Got an extra little piece. And you can click it. Beep, 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 beep. We have a button there. No style to it, but there's a button on the page. And the button also doesn't do anything because we don't have any JavaScript or anything telling the button what to do. But hey, the button is there all the same. So that's all of our text tags. I'm going to show you two more tags, and then we're done with basic HTML. We can actually start learning basic CSS from here on out. So let's go and add a list tag. These are actually really important. So if I go li and say I'm an item, you can see I kind of have a bulleted list right there. Yep, I have a bulleted list. Um, and if I have multiple items, I could either lay them out like that, or I should, if I have multiple items, wrap them in a UL, which is unordered list. And now I have to select this and cut it and paste it because I did it in a weird order. And you learn to get really good at those kind of things as a web developer. So I have a UL tag with multiple LI tags in it. This is an unordered list and list items. So that's what those stand for. Uh, these would be things like a navigation, a top navigation on your page. You will define a list of things and then use CSS to lay them out as a navigation. Um, you can also change this to OL, OL, and you'll make it an ordered list, which is not very useful. You don't do this as often in HTML, but you can see as soon as I changed it to OL, I got number one, number two added to my LIs. But usually LI and UL is the combination you'll go for. That creates a list of items, and then you can use CSS to style that in a way you need to. So there you go, that's it. That's all you need to know for HTML. It's tags with attributes, with tag names. That's HTML in a nutshell. Let's start building an actual web page with style and look and feel in the next video. We're gonna get into CSS.